What's up everybody? My name is Shannon and I'm still waiting for my Seder and today we are talking about the last Grisha versed book, at least for now, Rule of Wolves by Lee Bardugo. Here's the thing, I wasn't going to read this book. When it came out, I knew I wanted to see spoilers just because I know how Lee Bardugo works. Like I, I have put myself through enough pain trying to read her books. I really liked King of Scars and I'm like, I know how she does her endings and I just know that something's gonna happen, it's gonna make me mad. Like I just wanna know what I'm getting myself into. And what I found made me very angry and it made me just be like, you know what? I'm not putting myself through that. That is like a 20 hour audiobook. I don't wanna listen to it. I don't wanna go through all of this just to get there. But since I already had the audiobook, um, cause I got it on Audible, I was like, you know what? Maybe I'll just, you know, I'll put it on like 2x speed. I'll just get through it and we'll just kind of see how it goes. And overall, no spoilers, I will say that it wasn't as bad as I was expecting it to be. I do wonder if that's because I went in with my expectations on the floor. Um, but for the most part, I will say Rule of Wolves did a very good job of wrapping up Nikolai and Zoya. As far as any of the other characters go, I'm not really so sure. I think Nina did get to a pretty good ending. I have my own problems with how Nina has been handled since Six of Crows though. But like ultimately what I'm here for is Nikolai and Zoya. And I do think their arcs were done very well and I do like where their characters went. I do think that where this book ends feels like a satisfying conclusion except for one little part. So for those reasons, like I think it's a perfectly fine book. Was it what I was wanting? No. Is it Lee Bardugo's best work? No. If anything, it feels kind of like she backslid a little bit um, from some of her other books. So for those reasons, I am giving it a C minus. I do think it was fun. I do think it was interesting, um, but it still wasn't that great. Now I do want to talk about spoilers with this book just because like in order for me to get through it, and I think a large part of the reason why I was able to get through it is because I was spoiled. So I want to talk about that. If you're not here for spoilers, understandable. That's totally fine. Go for it. You go right into it. But I do think when it comes to Lee Bardugo's books, I do think knowing what happens is a better way to do it. That's how I was able to get through the Grishaverse because I already knew like what to expect. I already knew what I was getting myself into. I think that's why Crooked Kingdom hit me so hard because I didn't know what was going to happen in Crooked Kingdom. So I, I think just knowing the spoilers for Lee Bardugo makes things go a little bit smoother. So the big thing that I heard with this book is that the Darkling dies again. <laughs> like what was the point? <laughs> like why would you bring him back to life just to kill him again? Like that's so stupid. It's so annoying and like everything I read about it like didn't make it better. Like he kind kind of dies because of death through redemption, except he doesn't. So when I was like actually reading it, I, I was kind of looking out for those things. And Alexander does get points of views in this book. Uh, I don't think they were the best. And I think that's largely because Lee Bardugo has a very weird relationship with this character. Uh, he would swing wildly between being sympathetic and seeming like maybe he does want that piece or like maybe he is kind of like, changing his ways to being that mustache, you know, twirling villain, just like we always knew him to be. It was weird, but I kind of expected it. And then when you actually get to the scene where he sacrifices himself, this book has like several climaxes and it, it was kind of like tacked on at the end. I will say this book is a little bit of a mess. We are kind of all over the place with the war that's happening. There are too many perspectives, one of which is entirely brand new and I felt like you didn't need at all because it almost didn't intersect at all with the rest of the book, which is the final one and like tying together all of these series. When we finally get to the end with, you know, like trying to stop this blight that we've only been introduced to in this book and you know, like the full is doing these things and like whatever it did feel very much like oh right I forgot about this thing let's tack it on and basically what happens is the Darkling sacrifices himself um, not to die but to be in pain for eternity he has to like stab the thornwood through his heart in order to stop the blight from spreading in order to heal the fold like all of that i do think it was interesting because he was kind of atoning for what he did but what was weird about it is that like he does it and he says like i regret nothing i am the best i hate you all like it was weird right it was super weird i'm like why why did you tack this up like it's like Lee Bardugo had to say like i know he's doing this thing but you should still hate him another thing that was weird to me is that the darkling demands to see Alina, um, which I feel like was coming. Um, and what's weird there is that the scene with him and Alina and Mal is basically just Alina telling the audience like, no, 
I gave up my power because I wanted to and I'm super happy with Mal and I don't even remember the Darkling's name and everything's great and he's horrible. Like it was literally inserted. Like she was talking directly to the audience saying, stop shipping this, stop saying that my ending was dumb. Alina's happy, so there. Like it just felt so petty and so weird. Other than that, like the other thing that really bothered me is that David dies for absolutely no reason. Just like how Matthias dies for absolutely no reason. Basically just to fuel pain for the characters. Like, it, and David doesn't just die. He dies after his wedding and all it does is like add pain onto Jenya. And like, she's been through enough. Like, I don't understand why we needed to add that. I don't understand why we needed that extra dose in there, but it's Lee Bardugo. So again, like I was kind of, you know, not super surprised by it, but it made me frustrated. If I went into this book not knowing about those three things, I think it would have been a horrible experience. And when I read them just as spoilers, I'm like, I don't need to read this book. I know I would give it one star. I know I would give it an F. But when I read it, it wasn't as bad as all that. Um, it was still a mess. I still think like this book, she sacrificed so much, I feel, to say once again that the Darkling is evil and we should hate him. Like it felt very strange. And the book leaves off with, well, what if we, you know, set the Darkling free and kill him? So she's gonna kill him three times, which is just so bizarre. I don't understand it. She also threw in like a random heist with the crows. I didn't understand that. Like it was fun to see them, but I completely forgot what they even had to do with the plot because they didn't really have anything to do with the plot. So in my opinion, Rule of Wolves could have been a lot shorter. I think it really got away from her. I think the whole point should have been just about Nikolai and Zoya. And overall coming out of this, like they are like the shining characters of this series. Like if anything was done right and correctly, it was Nikolai and Zoya. I really appreciated them. I really liked where they ended. I do think it's a little bit ironic and a little bit of a double standard. What happens to Zoya versus what happens to Alina. Uh, and basically what this has solidified in me is that like, I I'm done with Lee Bardugo. I know I read her new adult novel and that she's gonna be writing sequels and stuff, but I just, if she can do all of this growth and then put this book out and then like the drama that's going on with the show, like I'm still gonna watch the show, but like the drama that I'm hearing coming from that, like I, I'm just done. Like I, I don't wanna read any more of her writing. I don't wanna see her write any more books. I want this to be it. Like I want her to just move on from the Grishaverse. If she wants to write something else, great. But I want her to just like let it lie. And I know she's not going to because people still disagree with her takes and she's not gonna stop until people agree with her takes. So I am giving Rule of Wolves a C minus. I feel like if you've come this far as well, might as well read Rule of Wolves. Just don't really expect anything from it. And overall, I'm just, I'm done with Lee Bardugo. I'm not going to read any more of her books. So it's just, it's been an interesting time, but this time in our lives has come to an end. But anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you liked it, be sure to the like button down below and don't forget to subscribe to Not Books with me every week. That is everything I got for today and I will see you guys next time. Bye!